grace and peace to you this Wednesday, um, October the 9th. It's good to be in front of you doing morning devotions as we continue to monitor Hurricane Milton and lifting up prayers. Knowing that uh, there's something scary in the Gulf. Uh, it's just worrisome. So anyway, just holding them in my prayers, knowing that uh, life's going to be interesting in a couple of days or today, I think, in the next couple of hours. So we raise our morning devotions up and we go to Facebook to Stephen Charleston uh, from Oklahoma City, Choctaw Elder friend from seminary and Stephen writes for us this morning I will remember when the house is quiet when only this evening sun keeps me company when I have a clear time for remembering then I will see us again just as we are working so hard to create change taking on the great moments of our time Full of hope and energy, I will remember and be stronger for the memory. Because of you, the good work continues. Amen. From here, we go to the Center for Action and Contemplation, which is in Albuquerque. Dancing with Divine Fire is the theme of the week. Now we go to the Cosmic Dance. Spiritual writer Joyce Rupp understands all of creation as part of the Cosmic Dance. No one person has been able to fully communicate this amazing dance of life to me. But Thomas Merton comes close with his description in New Seeds of Contemplation. Merton's use of the phrase cosmic dance set my heart singing when I first when I read it. I felt my early childhood experience in nature of the inner dance being echoed and affirmed. When we are alone on a starlit night, when by chance we see the migrating birds in autumn descending on a grove of junipers to rest and eat. <coughs> when we see children in a moment when they are really children, when we know love in our own hearts, or when, like Japanese poet Basho, we hear an old frog land in a quiet pond with a solitary splash. At such times, the awakening, the turning inside out of all values, the newness, the emptiness, and the purity of vision that make themselves evident, provide a glimpse of the cosmic dance. Rupp continues, The soul of the world and our own spirits intertwine, influence, and influence one another. There is one great being who enlivens the dance of our beautiful planet. Everything that exists, the darkness of outer space, the greenness of our land, the blue of our seas, and the breath of every human creature, all are intimately united in a cosmic dance of oneness with the Creator's breath of love. Rupp celebrates the restoration that takes place by her conscious participation in the dance. There is such power in the cosmic dance. Each time I resonate with this energy, I sink into my soul and find, wide, find a wide and wondrous connection with each part of life. I come home to myself, feel welcomed and restored to kinship with the vast treasures of earth and universe. I am rebalanced between hope and despair, slowed down in my greedy eagerness to accomplish and produce no matter the cost to my soul, beckoned to sip the flavors of creation in order to nourish my depths. Whenever and however I join the cosmic dance, it jogs my memory and gives me a kind of second sight, a glimpse of the harmony and unity 
that is much deeper and stronger than the forces of any warring nation or individual. My trust that good shall endure is deepened. My joy of experiencing beauty is strengthened. My resolve to continually reach out uh, beyond my own small walls is renewed. The energy leaps and twirls in such in each part of existence commands my attention and draws me into a cosmic embrace. Very long sentences. I sense again the limitless, limitless love that connects us all. I come home to that part of myself that savors kinship, birth compassion, and welcomes tenderness. I rediscover that I am never alone. Always the dance joins me to what is. <clears throat> we now move to Luther Seminary, my way of the internet, to St. Paul, Minnesota. And in St. Paul, we read from Hebrews chapter 4, 12 to 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two -ed any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides the soul from spirit and joins joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one whom we must render an account." Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our devotion writer is Mark Holaba, retired astronomy professor, Grand Marais, Minnesota, author of Spirit and Sky, Lakota Visions of the Cosmos. At the 2022 Evangelical Lutheran Church, Churchwide in America, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Churchwide Assembly, a holy, a service of holy commitment uplifted native voices to mark the repu, repudiation of the doctrine of discovery. Many words heard during that assembly pierced us like a two-edged sword laying bare wrongs of the past. Likewise, we received mercy and found grace through word and sacrament. Permeating the service was a theme, God of diversity who made the world in colors, in seasons, in endless variety, who created all the earth's people in God's own image. Burning sage and prayer smoke, spoken while facing the four cardinal directions centered our hearts and minds on a God who sympathizes with our weaknesses. We prayed for mercy and grace to learn the way of true repentance and reconciliation. It was the beginning. Each of us is called to continue this communal journey where we cherish every person as a beloved child of our Creator God. Let us pray. Creator God, judge the thoughts and intentions of our hearts and open our hearts and minds that we may receive mercy and find grace. Amen. Well, I hope all these words help you through this week so that you can be a blessing to someone. That's all we're put on earth for, to be blessings for others. And in blessing others, we ourselves are blessed. So be a blessing. Amen.